If you didn't know you could paint your countertops, you are in for a treat today because we are updating our old countertops by painting them. So we are going to be using the Rust-Oleum countertop transformation kit today. We actually used this exact kit four years ago to update our laminate countertops. The biggest part four years ago too was actually just changing the color. The, the countertops were in decent condition, it's just they were green and that didn't go with the vibe we wanted in our kitchen. Now it's been four years, we're going to show you exactly how well these countertops have held up and show you why we want to try to do this again. This is our kitchen on a pretty typical day. You can see we have quite a lot of counter space and we also have a large island on the side of the kitchen. At this point in our lives, we just do not have the budget for a full kitchen remodel. And we also don't even have the budget to replace the countertops. So our plan is to paint them once again and we're going to show you the whole process. Countertops can be an expensive price point in your kitchen. If you're going to go with stone, quartz, granite, you can be anywhere from like eight to 15,000, depending on square footage. And if you're going to be doing arborite or laminate, it could be anywhere from like three to 6,000. Again, it all depends on color choices. And the amount of counter space yeah. that you have. Okay, so we're planning to do this process over the next two days. Our kids will be at school, our animals will be outside. We're going to use the proper protection and yeah, let's see how fast we can do this. Always use protection. <laughs> it's not wrong. Kitchen countertops are one of the highest traffic surface areas in your home. And I have to say after four years, these painted countertops have stood up really, really well. But I will show you the imperfections that have shown up. This is the only spot in the kitchen where you can actually see the old green countertop underneath. Something just stuck to the paint and completely debonded it from the countertop earlier this year and I've been hiding it with a planter ever since. Other parts of the counter look fine but you can tell that they've dulled and lost the gloss that used to be there. And then there's our island that has taken the bulk of the damage including this big scratch that just showed up about a month ago and this strange part that reacted in the paint which actually happened in the first year of us putting the paint on and finally this big scratched up area that happened because I put a wire basket on the counter. Other than one strange reaction and a few scratches, these countertops held up really well for about three and a half years and I would say that most people wouldn't even have noticed damage on them. That's why we figured for only $275 it was worth spending another weekend painting them. We're getting ready for our first coat of paint, but the first step we need to do is actually sand our countertops. Whenever you're sanding countertops, and especially whenever you're sanding epoxy, you want to make sure you wear a mask. You don't want to breathe all those little particles, so this kind of mask is probably your best bet. Not, you don't want the ones that are just like a fabric one, you want one that actually seals to your mouth and your nose and you sound like this. So that's something you definitely need to pick up before you start this process. The countertop transformation kit actually comes with this diamond scuffing pad and you can use that. I'm also gonna use my orbital sander with 150 grit that's connected to my shop vac just cause we had a couple spots that have some pretty good scratches from our previous use and we wanna make sure we get those all leveled out. And just a reminder to keep your kids and your animals away from the fumes. So they both work really good. This is just gonna capture the dust better, which I like. This is actually gonna be really good for your edges because using the orbital on your edges, you don't wanna round your edges over. So they both have their place. You can definitely do your whole countertop system with this. It's just gonna be a bit more messy. Um, I'm just gonna use both because we have both. You can see here, like essentially what you're trying to do is you're putting little scratches into the countertop so that when you start applying your product, it actually has something to bond to. Also, if you have any high points on your countertop, these will help level that out. So once you have your final coat on, it's gonna look nice and smooth. 
Before we started sanding, we wanted to make sure our sink was taped off so that the sander wouldn't rub against it. And we also removed our stove top so that we could paint the whole counter surface underneath it. So we are painting over painted countertops, but previously these were laminate countertops. And if you are painting over laminate, the process is exactly the same. When you're sanding your countertops, you want to be watching for any chips or nicks or any really deep gouges that you might find, because these areas are going to have to be fixed before you start applying the product. In our case, we didn't have any big nicks or chips, but we did have a couple spots where the paint or where the epoxy debonded. If you have a big nick in your counter, you're gonna wanna actually repair that with a two-part epoxy, which is separate from this kit first. Let that epoxy dry and then sand it smooth so that it's level. In our case here, you can see, so this is just an area where this is the old countertop and this is just an area where it peeled back. You can actually feel a lip with your nail and you want that smooth because if I paint this right now, you're gonna have a perfect outline of where all this has debonded. So the best way to repair this is to scuff down the edges so that it's flush and that you can go like this on all sides and not feel any lip. It only took us about half an hour to sand down the entire counter, including all of the rounded surfaces and the edges. Once all of the countertops were scuffed, Russ got to work taping off and protecting any of the surfaces that we didn't want to get paint on, including our cabinets, our sink, and our backsplash. And then we were ready to put on our base coat. The base coat goes on in two separate even coats and you put the second coat on about two hours after the first coat. We used the roller that came in the countertop transformation kit to roll on these coats of paint and then we used a brush for any surface areas that we couldn't get with the roller. As you complete each section, you want to go back and re-roll those sections going in one uniform motion from the top to the bottom to get a nice smooth finish across the surface. One quick word of advice, don't lean on counters after they've been painted. No, I did that on purpose because we have to do the laundry room and now I can just go up to the cabinet and be no. like countertop height. <laughs> like a... that's, my, <laughs> that's my counter hot top height mark. So now I can just go like this. This is a new fashion statement. Yep. And it's really handy when you're doing a lot of kitchen work. <laughs> counter top Looks height. Looks amazing.
Then two hours after the first base coat layer is done and dry, you can give the countertops a quick scuff again and paint your second coat of the base coat. It probably took us somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes to paint each of the coats of the base coat. And once it was done, we let it sit overnight and you wanna make sure that you paint the next coat within 24 hours. So our base coat is done. I've got her two coats. It looks really good. It went on really flat. Went on really, really nicely. We are now ready to do the top coat, which is the really smelly epoxy coat. So we're gonna have our masks on and then we're gonna get out of the house. Yeah. So before we can do the epoxy coat, um, they actually give you, this is like a little scuff pad. So we're just gonna lightly scuff all the paint and make sure that we pick up any hairs or debris. And then once we're done scuffing, you can use a tack cloth like that. And what that's gonna do is pick up any loose debris so that when you put your epoxy on, it's as clean as possible. If you end up having any little um, drops or like sometimes runs, runs you can be Especially very- Especially on the sides yeah. of the counter. You can carefully use a razor blade to cut them out, but I emphasize the careful part of the Lee. <laughs> She's a speech pathologist, so yeah. this is all right. I disapprove of this message. <laughs> But anyways, you can use a little razor blade to cut them out, but like I said, this is fresh paint, so be very, very careful. So we did the same countertop kit once before, as you guys saw, and we weren't a big fan of the brush, what do you call it, roller? The or development. Rolling thing the that roller. it came with. Yeah. So instead, last time we used foam rollers just from the dollar store, and we are definitely gonna use this again, as well as a dollar store tray just to mix everything. Brand um, new one. Brand new ones, there's nothing else used in this one and it was like a dollar so we could throw it away after. So. Yeah. All right, let's scuff some countertops. When you're ready to mix, pour part A into part B and make sure to get all around the edges on the inside of the can and mix it really thoroughly to get the right ratio for your countertops. This final two-part protective top coat rolled onto the counters exactly the same way that the base coats did and it probably took the same amount of time taking about 30 to 60 minutes to complete the entire kitchen. As I mentioned, the kit does come with a roller specifically for rolling the epoxy, but the last time we did our countertops, we found that it left little bits of the roller all through the paint, and we were not a fan of that. We had switched right away to a foam dollar store roller, and that worked much better, so I highly recommend just using your own little foam roller instead of the one that comes in the kit. When we measured the total square footage of our counters, it came out to be 59 square feet. But when we removed the square footage of the sink and the stove top, it was 49.3 square feet, just under the box recommendation of 50. And I will say that one box easily covered our 49 square feet of countertop and we definitely had extra material, both the base coat and the epoxy when we were done. When the countertop was dry about four to six hours after we had finished painting, we were able to remove all of the tape very carefully from around the sink and all of the surfaces. You want to wait at least 48 hours before you do any light use on the kitchen countertops and at least seven days before you're fully using your kitchen again but all of the hard work, painting and sanding, is done in less than two days. And here's how our countertops look after using the Rust-Oleum Countertop Transformation Kit. Okay. 
I think they look amazing and for a fraction of the cost of new countertops and if they stand up this well in an area of high traffic I can only imagine they would stand up even better in other areas of the home like laundry room counters or bathroom counters. Kitchen is done, second time. It's done, counters are refreshed. They look really good. I don't, good for another four or five years. Yeah, honestly, I'm really happy. I didn't realize how dull our old countertops were until we put the new stuff on, but um, I'm really happy with the finish. It looks just as good. I'm sure it will last just as long. So those kits, they cost about $275, which I think is a smoking deal. I mean, it's a bunch of labor, but you can't include that if you're a DIYer. Um, and to replace, we have a lot of square footage in our kitchen. I would assume we'd be around 10 grand. So, and it looks good. So this was significantly more affordable than new countertops. And if you're looking for a budget-friendly way to update, or a way to help you save for those new countertops, uh, I think we would definitely recommend this. We are very happy and now we can make some food. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go have lunch. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know what you think of the countertop transformation kit in the comments below. And as always, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future DIY and budget-friendly renovations. Thanks so much for watching.